let's jump into problem 9 to a labor variances. So as we read through the question, we're on the lookout for actuals and we're on the lookout for standards because of course we're comparing actuals to standards and we're going to do some analysis based on that. So here we go. Frank's Bikes makes fixed gear bicycles. The company set the following standards related to labor. Each bike should take four direct labor hours to manufacture at a cost of $15 an hour. So four times 15, that's $60 in uh, labor cost per bike. For August, the company produced 160 bicycles and employees worked 700 direct labor hours. The company's total labor cost for the month was $10,000. So up here looks to me like standards. And down here looks to me like actuals. And we're going to fill in this table below. I've provided in the workbook. I provided it to my students when they were practicing, but on tests, I don't provide it. So be careful about this as you are working through your professor may or may not give this to you on a test situation. AQ though, for labor, it's the actual quantity of labor hours worked. You often see this denoted as AH, also actual hours in uh, other textbooks. I just say AQ to be consistent. It's less to memorize. Everything's AQ, AP with me. And AP actually is often AR, actual rate in other textbooks, but I just say AP, price per hour of labor. So our actual quantity of labor was 700 direct labor hours. And our actual price per hour, well, we paid $10,000. $10,000 divided by 700 hours is $14.286. $14.286. So, you know, $14.29 an hour, essentially. 700 times 14.286, blah, 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 is $10,000, right? So that's the actual amount I paid for my labor. AQSP takes $700 and multiply by the standard price per hour of labor, which is 15. 700 times 15 is $10,500. And again, this is the per hour rate, right? Per hour rate. Uh, so 700 times 15, $10,500. Now we just take the difference between the two. We go, okay, well, we're 500 apart. That is a variance of 500. Is the variance good or bad? We don't say good or bad. We say favorable or unfavorable. Well, we actually paid our employees around 14.28 an hour. Our standard says we pay them 15 an hour. This is favorable for the company. The company saved money here on wages. Now, why would that have happened? Well, maybe we had a more inexperienced workforce. We had some turnover. Our wage we paid was lower than expected. And by the way, this can be a bad thing, right? Even though it says favorable in the variance, maybe we're underpaying people. We're going to lose people. Maybe, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of uh, negative consequences to favorable variances. Uh, okay. Uh, SQSP. So SP, $15 an hour, that's our standard wage rate or our expected wage rate for our direct labor workforce. SQ, we answer the question. Given the actual level of output at the actual output, how much, in this case, labor should it take? How many labor hours should it take? So given the fact that you look at like whatever the company makes, look at whatever the output was. Company made 160 bicycles in the month and you go, okay, given the fact that I made 160 bikes, how many hours should it have taken? And the answer is four hours per bike. This should have taken 640 direct labor hours. So if I told the entrepreneur, Frank, before the year, before the month, I said, hey, you're gonna make 160 bikes next month. He would have said, okay, that'll take 640 labor hours. This is how many employees I need to bring in. In actuality, it took 700. So they were a little bit off there. So 640 is our SQ. Our SP remains 15, 640 times 15, $9,600. The difference here is 900. Now the question is, is this favorable or is it unfavorable? Well, it actually took 700 hours to do work that we think should have taken 640. This is unfavorable. Our employees were inefficient. Maybe that goes to the hypothesis. We brought in a bunch of inexperienced workers, paid them lower. Um, 
And so we were favorable as far as wage rates go, but they were slower and we were unfavorable as far as efficiency goes. That's possible, but you know, you wouldn't know unless you actually managed the company what the real cause was. Overall, you just take the big one minus the small one. So 900 minus 500 were 400 and then, you know, it's uh, unfavorable. If they're both favorable, you'd add them together and get a bigger favorable variance. In this case, we had one unfavorable, one favorable, take the big one minus the small one. So 400 unfavorable as our overall labor variance. But there we go. It would be very favorable to me if you'd hit one of those. Oh my gosh, I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> if you hit one of those buttons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Hope you like my cool glasses. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.